Hi, this is Odie, and today I'm having a look at this Ingram AV98 from the show Pat Labor. Now, this is made by CMS Corporation in 2008, and this set is specifically the OVA version, and I'm going to get more into that in a minute. Uh, there is one figure in the box that can be displayed in two different ways. That's why there's two different pictures on the front of the box. That's not really spelled out in most places, so I just want to be clear that this is one figure in the box. Another reason I'm making this video is that I found it almost impossible to confirm from sources online whether I could actually pull this off. So I'm not uh, into everything CMs make, and this is my first thing from them. But in all the video reviews I watched and just text and picture reviews on the internet, no one specifically said to me, you can pull this off and make it look like this. So one of the objectives of this video is to show, yes, if you buy this set, you can have it looking the OVA version as shown on the right, but you can really easily just pop that piece off and make it look exactly like it does here on the left. So let's get the toy out of the box and have a look. I'm happy to say that the first thing you notice taking it out of the box is that we get a really sturdy styrofoam insert. And given that this is a lot of die cast in this figure, the styrofoam is really appreciated, especially the reseal ability of it. Um, I've already taken the figure itself out, but we've got space for the accessories here and really snug and secure holding place for the uh, Ingram itself. So to quickly run down what those accessories are, we get this sticker sheet which just lets you sticker your Ingram up to be whichever unit you want. Now I wanted it to be Alphonse, so I've used the first batch, but you could use whichever one you want. We also get these plugs, which are to cover screw holes. Now, I don't know if this is standard, but I got two rows of plugs, so I've already used one row, and this second row is just extra. Now that may have been an accident in mine, or maybe everyone gets them, I'm not too sure, but if I did want to remove the screws, I can re-plug it again with this new batch, which is pretty cool. We get this um, sturdy looking display stand, and the only thing that sells it a little bit short is the gold sticker on the front, which looks a little bit cheap, and I've slightly misaligned it, which doesn't help. I would have preferred a nice metal or even embossed plastic plaque, but the gold sticker is all we got. now. It's a little bit ugly. Uh, to me, it also looks like that this base is a reuse of one of the previous versions of the base. You can see this rim around here, which has a little bit of plastic inserted into it. Maybe if I hold it up on an angle, you'll see it better. So that plastic insert fills the slot where a more complex uh, display backing used to be on one of the other versions, I think. But uh, this version is just pure flat base with the space for the feet. Now, I wasn't sure about that before I bought it, so that's another point to note on the OVA version, is that you don't get the full base that you would get with, I think, the TV version. The figure itself ships with this unit attached to the shoulder. So this is for um, the OVA version look. Now, I really hate this look, and I the first thing I did was pull them off. I'll show, it how, I'll show you how to swap them in a moment, but uh, it actually has the accessory pieces in this tray here of the standard shoulder, which I've already pulled out, along with other pieces that I've pulled out, like uh, the shotgun, the pistol, little antenna. It comes with two sets of antenna, so if you accidentally break one set, let's give you a closer look, these things are so tiny that they're really easy to snap. So if you're a bit uh, ham-fisted and snap it off, they do give a spare set, so you've got the option of doing it a second time if you made that mistake. And you can see a couple of extra pilots there. These pilots don't look like anyone in particular. They're pretty um, generic. Uh, something that was a bit disappointing is that there's no Zumi character in this. None of them look like her. And given that this is Alphonse, I thought we would have got her in there. But no, I don't think we did. Uh, there's an assortment of hands, all of which I don't have much use for. Different visors. You can, there's different eye configurations. It's all not really noticeable in the figure, but I guess we'll get to that in a minute. And finally, this is a steel bar used for raising and lowering the seat inside the figure. Here's the Ingram out of the box, looking absolutely fantastic. Um, a bit of history for me is that probably the very first Japanese figure of anything that I ever bought was an Ingram AV98, as well as a Type 0 model kit, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, it's hard to remember, it's so far back. 
and I did a pretty bad job of building those and I kept them for a lot of years and then chucked them out because they were pretty substandard in the way that I did them. This guy feels like it's about the same size as what they were except it's just beautiful to look at. It is made so nicely. It's got loads and loads of features and loads of die cast. And here starting at the bottom we can see how much die cast is really in it. The whole foot area down here and the lower legs, the knees, the thighs, these are all die cast but it doesn't stop there. The die cast moves all the way up. So we've got die cast in the forearms. It's nice and cold to the touch. These little bits here I think are plastic. So shoulders, the head's plastic. Uh, there's die cast on the top of the chest here. I think this is plastic in here but more die cast around the bottom of the torso. So it's, it's quite a heavy little figure but it does support its own weight surprisingly well for how heavy it is. It's got beautiful clicky joints in the knees. Just listen to this. So the feet are a little loose, but I think that's so that it can just go into whatever position you want. Because of the weight of the metal, the, the toy, it, it finds its own level. It doesn't need clicks in the ankles or stiff ankles to hold a position. The weight sort of pushes down on it and it just sits flat, which is really awesome. If you have a look on the inside, you can see there's working pistons inside there. It's a little bit hard to see them open and close, but they do, and it looks, looks really nice. So we've got tilt at the ankle, backwards and forwards, like this, quite articulated. There's a lot of little details, so you can see there the aerials sticking out of the side just where the neck is. That little part has to be tabbed on, it comes as one of the accessories. Out of all the parts, that's the one that most frequently pops off, and I'm sure a little dab of glue could fix that situation, I'm just too lazy to do it. And you'll notice those two little round headlights at the top of the chest as well, they also have a tendency to pop off. Uh, I wouldn't want to glue those on because there are alternate uh, panels. So if you don't want the lights showing, there's an alternate closed panel that just sits flush with the surface that you can put on instead of those lights. The shield here can pop off and underneath you see that it's got the uh, electromagnetic baton, I think that is, for disabling opponents. There's two versions of this, a short version which can store in the shield and a much longer deployed version that you can use for attacking your enemies. Uh, that's back in the accessory tray. It just tabs on really easily. You can have it on or off if you want, no problems at all. The articulation in the elbow is a little weird. It seems that the plane of motion isn't perpendicular to the surface here. It's at a kind of angle, but it doesn't really matter. You do get decent motion. Like you can see it doesn't make even 90 degrees because the armor panels touch each other. Um, with a little bit of jiggling of the armor, you can make it go more like that. But I worry that moving the armor panels up and down too much is going to disrupt the cloth lining that's sort of looking like the weather shield underneath. Uh, this gray stuff, if I can just focus on it. They do pull off the look pretty good with that uh, weather seal substance but does hamper just a little bit the posability. I've dimmed the lights now to show another feature. We get this um, cool police light flashing pattern on the shoulders. Uh, we get a choice between both being red, like the TV show, or you can pop off one and make it blue. And here you can see the blue one attached. Now the blue one is meant to be the OVA version, so I'm going to turn the light back on now and go ahead and put the alternate shoulder on. To do it is relatively straightforward. What we want to do is just pop off this uh, end cap, like that. Then we can just untab, oh, falling over, untab the front and the back. Now here's a close-up of what it looks like underneath. So it's just kind of a free-floating bit on the top of that uh, shoulder area. Onto that, all we've got to do is tab in the alternate piece. Very, very simple. There's really nothing to it.
like so. Now, I find that incredibly ugly, and I don't like it. So, uh, I choose not to leave it in that configuration. There is another tiny little handle kind of thing that tabs onto this end. Uh, it's it's minuscule and to be honest my fingers are so fat I don't think I could even show it in the video without tweezers but it's just like a little blue detailing that tabs on the end here and it helps to hold it together a bit as well but as I mentioned I'm I'm not really going to show that now it's a waste of time looking in through the open window on the uh, neck area you can see our pilot is visible from within now I've got the pilot in the up position you can put the pilot in the down position where they're more shielded from uh, enemy attack. And the purpose of the up and down position is basically if the head gets blown off, you can just look out the window instead of relying on monitors. To get that pilot in the down position, there's a little slot at the back. To access the slot, just remove the battery cover. Now, you see the battery in there. Uh, when this toy ships, the battery is in, but there's a see-through plastic disc on the other side of the battery which is almost invisible and if you didn't know it's there you'd be wondering why the toy doesn't work but uh, just removing that disc lets the battery work anyway I'm going to pull the battery out and behind the battery there's a little hole there and you can see this weird tool that comes with the set you can plug it in like this and just push this down and then on the other side you'll see that our pilot has gone down into the the torso cavity for more protection so I don't like it in that position I like it to be in the up position but there are other uses for that and that is to get the pilot out so to get it out we just open this up like this push the little flap down and you can see uh, her feet sticking out there and that's how we get the pilot in and out I don't need the ability to take the pilot out um, I would have been happy if it just looked better, like maybe had her red hair or something. And with this guy's nemesis, the Griffin, I've heard that the bud figure doesn't come out at all. Uh, I've got nemesis, uh, sorry, what am I talking about? I've got Griffin coming right now, so hopefully I might have it tomorrow or the next day, and I'll do a review of that then. But uh, I'm really loving these guys. There's one further feature that I wanted to show, and that is the pistol feature. So an Ingram has a pistol in the lower leg down here, and to access that you just open this panel and you can see that that raises the gun up it's like a big revolver now the robot itself can't reach down that far to grab his own gun so the way an AV-98 does it is to extend his forearm so if you have a look at the forearm we can pull this out like that and you can see a little bit of mechanical detail about how the arm stretches out uh, that stretching allows the hand to exactly reach where the gun is so you can just grab the gun out of there here's the gun just holds in with friction and our pat labor is ready to blow someone away like dirty harry with a huge huge revolver that's pretty awesome i like the way that they have conventional weapons in these instead of some far-flung futuristic uh, lasers or what have what have you in the show there are there are labors who have that kind of weapon but the ingrams just aren't that kind of robot to give some idea of scale here's my old ruler and to the top of the head crest is about 16 centimeters so we're looking at about six six and a quarter inches so it's not that great big of a figure um, but it's very satisfying nevertheless to really bring home that, here are some figures that you may be familiar with. A Classics Mattel He-Man and Hudson from NECA's Alien line, both of which are substantially taller than this Ingram. And finally, this scale comparison is Masterpiece Frenzy next to our Ingram AV-98. So he comes up to around about the height of the tip of the knee armour. My final thoughts. I love this set. I've had it sitting in the back of my mind for literally 10 or 15 years now that I need to get some more Pat Lepore merchandise. And this is very satisfying to own. It only cost about $75. And for the amount of die cast in this figure and posability and features, I think that that is a really, 
good price. I don't feel uh, ripped off. I just wish there were more figures to this standard from the show that I could buy. As I mentioned a minute ago, the other one which I've got coming is the Griffin, which is a big black label, a little bit taller than this guy. And from everything I can see, he is going to be freaking awesome, and I can't wait to get a hold of him. But sadly, I think those two, like um, the AV98 and the, the Griffin, are the only two die-cast figures from CMs in this line. And although there are a whole bunch of others, uh, like the Broken and, you know, I can't even name them all. There's too many. None of them meet the standard that these guys meet, which means I won't be picking them up. I've read reviews of some of the plastic ones saying that they are absolutely shocking. And, you know, I don't want to sink $70 into some piece of crap. $70 for this is worth it, but uh, I'm not just going to throw my money away on things that are pretty widely accepted to be substandard. So I guess CMs has a varying reputation depending on which figure you get. If there's one regret that I've got, it's got nothing to do with this figure, but with the merchandise for the show in general, it's that, boy, do I want the Yamato version of this. The really huge one with a bigger figure on the inside and... It is so expensive now. I just can't get it. It's gone beyond what I'm willing to pay for this franchise. But, I mean, I would pay even three, three fifty maybe for that, for that toy. But what I see these days, it seems to be going for like 700 to to 1000 And there's no way I'm buying uh, a label for that price. But I really wish that we would get that toy released again. But given that Yamato kind of went out of business and they're Arcadia now, I don't think that that's going to happen, which is really sad because I want it. I really, really, really want it. So um, this is going to have to do until either I win the lottery or I get a really good deal. So anyway, uh, this has been my video review for the Ingram AV98 OVA version of... Pat Labor's sort of signature robot. I'm Odean and thanks for watching.